Today, today we're going to discuss Pearl Harbor and the attack of Pearl Harbor and the aftermath of that. Pearl Harbor, as Franklin Delano Roosevelt said, <coughs> was a day of infamy. It forever changed uh, history and really altered, I would say, the 20th century as well, along with uh, relationships uh, that the United States carries with Europe, Soviet Union, and their influence in the Pacific. It's likely that without Pearl Harbor, Pearl Harbor happening, the United States would not have as much influence in the world as it does today. However, it's also likely um, that World War II might have had a different outcome. So, take this picture here and just begin to place yourself back on December 6th. 1941. It's a gorgeous Hawaiian day. If you've never been to Hawaii, it's there's no other way to describe it but paradise. There's trade winds blowing throughout the year. In December, they probably would have been about 15 to 25 miles an hour, uh, keeping things nice and cool. Also, of course, there was Kona winds, which would make it very humid, but typically trade winds were very common. And there's also no bugs in Hawaii, which is fantastic, at least uh, in my experience there wasn't. So it, uh, there's no other way to describe a it. paradise. It's sunny, it's very green, there's a cool breeze, it's not too hot, there's no bugs, it, it, it's perfect. And this picture above is a, a scene from Ford Island, which if you were stationed at Pearl Harbor, you might be living on. And I'll show you where that is a little bit later uh, on a map. But a picture-perfect day, and no one would expect any attack uh, from Japan anytime soon. Especially because the day before, um, Franklin Delano Roosevelt had just reached out to Japan in order to try and stave off uh, any type of war coming. So just to review what led up to Pearl Harbor, beginning in 1938, uh, the United States was supplying, well, well before then, the United States was supplying almost 80% of Japanese uh, fuel. And this was essentially uh, a necessary commodity for the Japanese war effort. Once Japan had invaded East China and continued aggression in Manchuria, and then invaded Indochina, and, um, there was a full embargo of American goods so the, ja so the, the Japanese had no one uh, to gain fuel with. This was a problem because they couldn't continue their war effort without fuel, and they were uh, quickly running out of it. Um, they saw other uh, islands in the Pacific and other territories in the Pacific, like Vietnam, that they could take over from the Dutch and, and British, and that were defendable. But they didn't want the United States Navy getting in the way. This immediately put the crosshairs on the Pacific Fleet at Pearl Harbor. At the same time, they had also brokered a, a pact with the Axis powers that said that if one of them uh, was declared war, war, they would also declare war on another country, similar to the uh, pacts and alliances made in World War I. And so now that they had the full backing of Nazi Germany and uh, fascist Italy, along with, at this time at least, uh, the backing of the Soviet Union. In addition, they had seen in 1940 and 1941 how effective the German Blitzkrieg was. They saw that if this type of warfare strategy could be used where one, where um, war is executed in a quick manner and a surprise attacks from many different facets, that would be very hard for enemies to retaliate against them and make it easy for them to wipe out any defenses and thus move in and uh, establish rule where necessary. As I said, the United States and Japan had tried diplomacy. 
However, the United States uh, could not trade with Japan, um, nor could they lend them any money because of the Neutrality Acts. Secondly, neither country wanted to retreat on their position. Japan did not want to give up East China. This would, against, would have gone against the Bushido Code, which really did not advocate any surrender. Secondly, the United States did not want to uh, appease uh, the Japanese after they had already condemned similar acts uh, of Nazi Germany and Japan in the past. So this put the target on the Pacific Fleet in Pearl Harbor. Just a little bit of background on Pearl Harbor. Although Japan had tried diplomacy, they were quick, quickly running out of time to gain the necessary oil that they needed to. And on November 26th, although they had been planning for an attack on uh, Hawaii since early um, or late summer of 1941, uh, November 26th, ships sailed from Japan uh, to outside of Pearl Harbor. They sailed uh, from a northerly direction. Normally, the shipping lanes uh, they didn't ship, they didn't sail in common shipping lanes to avoid detection. But six aircraft carriers, along with 33 warships, along with uh, midget submarines, which were designed to sneak into Pearl Harbor and and blow up whatever they could, um, sailed from Japan and landed about 230 miles north of Hawaii. Admiral Is Isoroku Yamamoto led the assault. Uh, Admiral Yamamoto had studied in the United States, and he actually was opposed to war with the United States, um, mainly because he was afraid of the economic impacts that the United States could have. Uh, at this time, it was, the United States was uh, coming out of the Great Depression, but having studied in the United States, he knew uh, that the economic engine that was possible at the time, and he knew that Japan could not compete with uh, the amount that the United States was able to supply to their own war efforts. Nonetheless, he saw their only chance of success of uh, gaining economic independence from the United States as an attack on Pearl Harbor. Um, so he wanted to, he designed this preemptive attack. A preemptive is anything that you do first without necessarily uh, being 
attacked yourself, you do it before you're attacked. And so you plan this preemptive attack in order to take out the American Pacific Fleet, which would allow them to take over certain islands, uh, like the Philippines, for example, right there, um, and other interests along with uh, those in East China. Meanwhile, in Hawaii, as I said, it was December 7th was a, a peaceful day, uh, although the attack started very, very early. I'll, I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, December 6th was a gorgeous Hawaiian day, and no one was expecting an attack. At Pearl Harbor itself, you could see on this map uh, where Pearl Harbor is in Oahu, and I'll bring this map up to talk about the attack. This map is where uh, the inside of Pearl Harbor looked like. So in the center, you can see that on the other map here, um, you can see that little island right there, is Ford Island. And on Ford Island, there were uh, numerous airplanes stationed from uh, wingtip to wingtip, fully loaded, because uh, they were the, you know, the minds of the U.S. military needed for the defense of other bases, uh, namely at Ford, um, on we at Wheeler Air Force Base, Hickam Air Force Base, uh, Kenyohe Air Force Base, and Iba B and Iba Air Station as well. So planes were loaded fully um, with their munitions and fueled up wingtip to wingtip on Ford Island. You could see uh, to the right, this is what was known as Battleship Row as ships were tied up uh, right next to each other. You know, the West Virginia, um, Nevada, uh, the Arizona, Pennsylvania, uh, and there was also ships over here, and then numerous other cruisers and destroyers uh, throughout the area. So these were very prone to attack, um, and it was very easy if one thing blew up for another thing to blow up. So it can be, again, an idea of what what well, Pearl Harbor would have looked like um, and today this is the view uh, if you were sailing from the eastern shore of Pearl Harbor and if you were sailing towards Fort Island uh, you could see how close the battleships would have been lined up next to each other that battleship that you see there is USS Missouri is actually a floating museum now but you can see the battleships would have been tied right next to each other. And just to give you another perspective, we could see Wheeler Air Force Base was slightly northwest of Pearl Harbor. Kanehohe Air, Air Base was on the east side of Oahu. Um, it is now a marine base, actually. Uh, Hickam Air Force Base is was just southwest or southeast of Pearl Harbor, uh, and it is now where modern day um, Honolulu Airport is. And then there was also Schofield Barracks, which were close to Wheeler Air Force Base. All these pl uh, bases had airplanes lined up in the similar fashion that was on Fort Island. So on December 7th, 1941, Japan launched its first attack at shortly after 6 a.m., before anyone was even up. At right before 7 a.m., a little hour over, a um, little under an hour after the attack uh, started, radar at Opana Point uh, began seeing blips of airplanes on their radar. Uh, Upon a point is located on Kauai, which is the next island northwest of Oahu. Uh, it's about 60 some miles away from Oahu, so there would have been ample time uh, had advance warning been given to scramble or to send airplanes up to meet the uh, coming attack force. However, the lieutenant at Opana Point uh, thought one of two things. One, there was a, supposed to be a scheduled arrival of B-17 bombers coming from the mainland, and he also thought it could have been a training exercise at the time as well. 
Irregardless, he failed to recognize、uh, the massive amount of Japanese dive bombers, torpedo boat, torpedo planes, and fighters heading toward towards Oahu. At 6:40 a.m., the USS Ward also began to、um, also spotted some of those miniature subs, or those midget subs that I had mentioned.、Uh, Heading towards Pearl Harbor and launched depth charges and sunk those those submarines. The first wave of Japanese aircraft arrived over the target area shortly between seventy seven fifty five a.m. Their their leader. Commander Mitsu Fukita sent the coded message "to to to" and "tora tora tora," allowing the fleet, two hundred and thirty miles away and from Hawaii, or from Oahu,、uh, to let them know that the attack had begun, and that there was complete surprise had been achieved. This is monumental, considering that the radar stations、uh, picked up this incoming force. At the same time, Japanese forces also strafed, which means that they、uh, this would be Japanese planes would mean that they strafed their guns or shot their guns down at the planes located on Wheeler Air Force Base and Schofield Barracks, and then they would continue their str-、uh, their run、uh, at Pearl Harbor itself on Fort Island. A second attack was launched at 8:40 a.m. on、uh, Kanahoe Air Base and Hickam Air Base, but before then, much of the damage would be done against the battleships. At 8:10, the USS Arizona, which I'm bringing that up. This is located here. Was struck when a bomb、uh, pierced its hull and penetrated into the the munitions hold along with the gunpowder. This、uh, once this armor piercing bomb、uh, slammed through a deck, it ignited the forward ammunition magazine and killed over a thousand people、uh, almost immediately. The USS Oklahoma was also struck. By several torpedoes, and it rolled over on its side,、uh, trapping 400 people inside its its hull, inside its ship,、uh, and entombing them in a watery grave.、Uh, you have to remember that, like I said, Pearl Harbor was a shallow harbor, so when these ships sunk,、uh, they didn't sink all the way, and this at some point gave、uh, some of the men on board hope.、Um, Especially in the Oklahoma, but as water rose,、uh, their ship became a watery tomb for them. The USS Utah also capsized,、uh, trapping fifty men inside their tomb,、uh, creating a tomb for them.、Um, and the West Virginia also sunk. Uh, the USS Pennsylvania, Maryland, and Tennessee all suffered significant damage.、Uh, the USS Nevada actually tried to outrun、uh, the Japanese attack, and、uh, was forced to run aground, which means it was forced to run into ground, which severely damaged the Nevada, but saved many men on on board. You might be asking yourself, well, why were men on the ships? Well,、uh, the ships required cleaning.、Uh, many men were living on these ships. You have to remember these were large battleships that. Could hold over a thousand men.、Um, this would make it easy、uh, to provide barracks and to provide living situations for these men. So many of them were on the ships themselves when these ships were sunk or attacked. The Neosho, I'm sorry, the Neosho actually, which is right here, actually was able to get away and actually exit outside the harbor by backing up and then going out. So、that ship was、uh, made to. Luckily, was able to escape. 
After about five minutes, American anti-aircraft fire did begin to register hits on Japanese planes, uh, but many of the shells that were improperly fused uh, fell on Honolulu, where residents actually assumed them to be Japanese bombs. Army or Air Corps pilots were able to take off and shoot down a total of 12 planes. Um, and at 10 a.m., however, because of this, uh, this counterattack, uh, the, ja the Japanese began to withdraw back to uh, their fleet 230 miles away uh, with their attack, in their mind, uh, a success. This is a picture of the USS Arizona um, right when the armor-piercing bomb pierced its forward ammunition compartment and blew the Arizona up uh, to bits right away. Just to give you some first-hand accounts, this is an account from William Lefebvre, Le who was a uh, first-class seaman, and he was aboard the West Virginia. And he said when he got topside after he had been torpedo attacked himself, uh, he was asked, well, what did you see? And he said, an awful mess. That's one way to put it. The only way that I could, that's the only way I could put it. And the sad thing to see, to see your whole battle line just, just sitting there, all full of smoke. Uh, and, oh, everybody firing that had a gun, possibly was firing. And it was very, very scary. And the next thing you knew, I was very, very shocked like everybody else must have been. And the next thing I knew, I just felt my feet being cold. And evidently, the blast from the Arizona must have just swept me right off the ship into the bay. So the, the explosion from the Arizona was so violent that it knocked Mr. LeFebvre off, uh, off the ship into Pearl Harbor itself. And then he was asked, did you see the Arizona go up? He says, oh yes, we saw her go up. As a matter of fact, we were trying to lock down our deck because the ship was listed and we could hardly manage to walk, so we were sliding down. And don't ask me why we went towards the water. That's something that, well, I mean, normally you'd think you'd go towards the ship that was inboard so you'd have a little protection. But I mean, you know, when your things are going like that, you just do what your mind tells you, and we went all towards the water. So that means they actually tried to evacuate as much as possible. Today, you can still see the Arizona in Pearl Harbor. Um, once it was blew up, like I said, it was a shallow grave. There was nowhere for it to go but down. And if you were to travel to Hawaii today, I'd highly recommend going to see uh, the USS Arizona Memorial. Uh, a boat will take you out on this um, through the bay and onto this memorial where it hangs over the Arizona. Uh, this is actually a close-up shot of uh, that I took personally of uh, the Arizona. And you can see here that there's still oil that leaks from the Arizona. These ships were fully fueled, ready to go. That's why some were able to get out of Pearl Harbor. Um, but these are called apparently the teardrops of the Arizona. And like I said, over um, a thousand men died. And you can see uh, once you get on that little platform that I showed you um, from the aerial view, uh, you see the names of all the people that died on the Arizona right here. So at the back of it, they have a, a wall. Um, try and give you another view of it that with all the names of everyone who um, died just on the Arizona on the back. So you could see there was a little, little part that you would walk through um, to see all these names. Uh, this video will just briefly show the aftermath of, of Pearl Harbor and some of the footage is taken directly from Japanese planes actually.
Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor on December the 7th, 1941, here dramatically shot by Japanese film crews for propaganda purposes, not only crippled America's Pacific fleet, it changed the course of history. Just the day before the raid, President Roosevelt had personally appealed to Emperor Hirohito not to drag their two countries into war. But it was too late. Japan had formed a secret pact with Germany to attack the Allied forces in Europe and in the Far East. America at that stage was neutral, but generally sympathetic to the Allied cause. This was an attempt to destroy American military power in the Pacific before she could strike back. You can see there in that picture just how close the planes were lined up next to each other on Fort Island. And you could also see them shooting up the hangars. I'll show you a picture of, of the impact of that in a minute. After this massive attack, Europe's war became America's, as Senator Connolly, chairman of the Foreign Relations Committee, made abundantly plain. With unbelievable treachery and craftiness, Japan has attacked our territory and murdered American citizens. Japan began this war in treachery. We shall end it in victory. Within hours of the Pearl Harbor raid, American Army and Navy officers were called from their homes and weekend golf clubs to meet at the War Department to prepare to retaliate. President Roosevelt officially informed Congress that a state of war now existed between the United States and Japan. Within hours, Congress gave him the authority to prosecute the conflict all out. The legacy of the raid was enormous. Five American battleships were sunk or damaged beyond repair. 200 aircraft were destroyed and more than 2,400 people killed. But more than that, Pearl Harbor led directly to what truly became the Second World War. So you saw, um, that was Japanese footage of itself. Uh, attacking the ships. You saw in one clip how close these ships were to each other and also how close the planes were to each other. Uh, if you were to go to Ford Island today, this is actually a picture from the hangar of Ford Island, you would still see the bullet holes of the 50 caliber machine guns um, that the Japanese used on their planes to attack Ford Island and, and uh, destroy the planes there to prevent any counterattack. So, for the most part, uh, this was probably the most successful use of air power in the world at the time. Probably more effective than the Blitzkrieg against Poland and France. Um, this was also the first time that aircraft carriers were used with so much success. And that would forever change warfare and forever show the importance of aircraft carriers uh, in today's military for any for any country, and that's one reason why the United States has devoted uh, so much of its Navy resources to having the largest aircraft carrier fleet in the world. The next day, uh, President Roosevelt would ask Congress for a, a formal declaration of war. Uh, the President, while he does command the military, he, is, he cannot declare war in another country formally. Uh, that's the will of the people, that's Congress's job. Um, at the time, the United States had a very, very small military, and it also meant that the United States was going to have to do whatever they could to rearm themselves during war, and by Franklin Delano Roosevelt declaring war first, uh, that would help. So let's listen to his speech before Congress. This is probably one of his most famous speeches ever. Uh, it's a speech known as the Day of Infamy, and he describes uh, the attack on Pearl Harbor. Mr. Vice President, Mr. Speaker, members of the Senate, of the House of Representatives, Yesterday, December 7th, 1941, 
a date which will live in infamy. The United States of America was suddenly and deliberately attacked by naval and air forces of the Empire of Japan. The United States was at peace with that nation and at the solicitation of Japan was still in conversation with its government and its emperor looking toward the maintenance of peace in the Pacific. Indeed, one hour after Japanese air squadrons had commenced bombing in the American island of Oahu, the Japanese ambassador to the United States and his colleagues delivered to our Secretary of State a formal reply to a recent American message. Japan has therefore undertaken a surprise offensive extending throughout the Pacific area. The facts of yesterday and today speak for themselves. No matter how long it may take us to overcome this premeditated invasion, the American people in their righteous might will win through to absolute victory. With confidence in our armed forces, with the unbounding determination of our people, we will gain the inevitable triumph, so help us God. Luckily, uh, there were some positives out of Pearl Harbor as well, or some fortunate events. The aircraft carriers of the United States were not stationed in Pearl Harbor at the time. Uh, this would be incredibly important because much of the Pacific War would be a naval war, along with uh, select landings on islands. So the Navy was necessary, uh, along with that air support, uh, to support troops on the ground and to eventually fight back against Japan. Initially, while the attack was ultimately successful and that was a surprise, uh, there was only five battleships out of nine that were completely destroyed, and many of the ships at the time were able to be restored within a few months. Um, so that allowed the United States to still have a Pacific fleet. Uh, so in some ways, the uh, attack on Pearl Harbor was not successful enough by the Japanese. However, there was fear, especially in Hawaii, that there was an invasion coming. And the government put on Hawaii martial law, which meant that no one was allowed to leave their house. The military was in charge. At the time, no one was allowed to be carrying more than $200 with them at any time. There was also a large amount of uh, Japanese uh, individuals or Hawaiians of Japanese descent in Hawaii. And they were sus suspected for helping to sabotage uh, the Pacific Fleet. Um, so many of them were rounded up. However, there was just too many uh, to be kept uh, under surveillance. But eventually... Uh, FDR would issue an executive order ordering uh, almost 120,000 Japanese Americans into concentration camps. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. But uh, Pearl Harbor led directly towards racism against uh, Japanese Americans, uh, many of whom were second, third, and fourth uh, generation Americans. Ultimately, however, Pearl Harbor, as uh, one of the videos said, led directly to the United States' entrance into World War II. And without it, it's likely that um, the United States would not have entered into a war, at least in the Pacific, and possibly maybe not into uh, Europe. Admiral Yamamoto, at the conclusion of his attack, uh, said that while he was happy he was successful, he really was just afraid that he would, that Japan had poked a sleeping giant and had woken a sleeping giant 
and now they were going to have to uh, face the reckoning of that sleeping giant, and that sleeping giant was the United States economy. That wraps up today's lesson. The one thing we can, uh, there's numerous things we can take away from this. We can take away uh, the power of execution or the power of planning. Um, there's a famous quote that says, uh, those who fail to plan, or those who um, fail to plan, plan to fail. Uh, the Japanese did an extensive amount of planning on this. Um, it goes to show what lessons we can learn about being vigilant and being on guard for whatever problems are coming in our lives, not to necessarily assume that things are going great all the time. And it also uh, gives us lessons on how we can overcome trials in our life, uh, even when we've been uh, really hurt or uh, knocked down uh, quite extensively. Please look at the bottom, uh, the bottom uh, for your homework assignment and let me know if you have any questions.